Hello guys and welcome to Super User Channel. In this video, I will talk about how you can use model groups and detail attached groups to create a complete floor layout in Revit. Let's start with this two bedroom apartment for example. Firstly, I will select all the elements within this apartment and group it under the name Apartment Type B. Then I'll simply copy and mirror the group multiple times to create a complete floor plan to build this housing complex. This means that with this group, I have the ability to make any desired changes inside just one apartment and those changes will be reflected instantly to all other units. So far, this might be basic knowledge for you if you already use Revit to design hotels and housing complexes. But there's more benefits to model groups than commonly known. And I will share with you some techniques for how to utilize model groups to manage and organize typical units design. The first technique is to export those model groups outside of the project, which will give you a little bit more flexibility when working with variations. You can do this by choosing the saved group option in the dialog box that appears when you right click on the group name in the project browser. Browse to where you want to save it and leave the box next to the include attached detail group option checked. Now I will open up the file directly from the saved location. This file contains only the group elements and some other views that show the detailed attached group. This technique is extremely helpful if you are working on a larger project and there is a team working along with you on the model. Because constant exploring of design variations directly on the live model can be disruptive to the rest of the team and for you as well. However, with this technique, you are getting the Unity group out of the project entirely into its own environment. And then you are free to explore with the unit design as you like. And if you like what you have changed, you can load them back to the main model while preserving the original data saved inside the group elements, like the room numbers and names. The second technique is to create schedules out of model groups. Firstly, I will go to the View tab and click on Schedules to create a new schedule. Now type the letter M on your keyboard and then double click on the model groups category. Then I will add some of the available fields on the schedule. I will add the type name, this is the actual name of the group, then the reference level, which is the level the groups are placed in, and then finally the count and click OK. Now this gives us a full list with every single group inside the model. Now I will click Edit next to Sorting and Grouping category to organize the schedule and make it more readable. Firstly, I will sort them by type and make it as a header. Also, I will add footer to the group's count and a plank line to improve the graphics of the schedule. Next, I want to sort them by level. Then I will check grand totals and uncheck itemize every instance. Then I will move to the formatting tab and make the type column hidden since I made it visible as a header from the sorting and the grouping tab. And to the count column, I will add calculate totals. Let's click OK and see the result. Now I have this complete model group schedule, listing out all of the group instances within my project. And I've got them organized by the name of each group, with the quantities for each floor, and then the total quantity in the entire project. Now, what makes this schedule more powerful is the option of adding custom parameters directly to model groups. For example, I will transfer the symbol schedule to a housing project apartment matrix. To do this, I'll click Edit next to the field category and then New Parameter. I'll create a type of parameter and call it Apartment. Then, I'll make it a yes-no type. As you can see, it appeared directly on the schedule. And from the schedule, I will check the boxes near the apartment's type. Then I'll edit the filter category and add a filter so I can only see the groups that has this new parameter checked. And here's my apartment matrix. 
I really encourage you to spend some time exploring the idea of adding other types of custom parameters to your schedule, like text parameter, or making them instant parameters, or even make them vary inside each group. Scheduling in Revit is really powerful and worth exploring. If you would like me to make a separate video about this topic, please let me know in the section comments below. Now let's move to the third technique, which is excluding group members. If one of the groups has a different element, like this block wall clashing with the stair shear wall at this location, you can simply remove it from the group entirely. Or you can exclude it by pressing tab multiple times from outside of the group until it's highlighted. Then you click on the little icon that says group member. Exclude this from this particular group instance. I personally prefer to remove the elements from the group than excluding it, as excluding members from outside the group has a history with me in causing fix a group. And please note that this excluded element will not appear in the schedules. But this is a tool that Rivet offers, and it's good to mention it. Fourth and final technique is to create detailed attached group for every model group. Try to put all the annotation work that is related to the group models inside its attached detail group, and invest time in organizing them as they will minimize your drafting time. And if you want to add dimensions between elements that are outside of the model group, you can add small model lines inside the model groups to measure from. Don't worry, those lines will not be visible in plans with a scale 1 to 100 or larger. But remember you need to update them to follow the latest design changes around them. That's it for today's video. Please like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, please write them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching!